Well, it's a warm day in July, a little muggy, buggy, and what I'm going to be doing is shooting some field points that I purchased from Ethics Archery. It's a test pack for crossbows. What I'm interested in in their field points are the heavier weights from a 200 grain to the 300 grain. And that reason is, but here in Pennsylvania, we have added, or they've had uh, bear archery. And this year for the elk, they have added an archery season for it. Anyhow, I'm looking at building some heavier crossbow arrows. Now my arrow is, this is a 17 inch arrow. I have a 110 grain brass insert in it. I also plan on changing from the brass inserts to a stainless steel insert that Ethics Archery sells for crossbows. And it's one that the insert itself uh, can be made from 100 grain to 200 grain. With using that style of insert, it'll also increase the front of center weight on my arrow and overall weight of the arrow. But to find out how these heads are doing in flight, I'm just using what I have already before I start building something different. So we're gonna shoot, start out with a 125 grain field point. This total arrow weight is 528 grains. Okay, now I have installed the 225 grain field point. My hour weight is 553 grains total hour weight. We're gonna shoot that, see how that one does. Okay, now I have a 250 grain field point on. Now my total hour weight is 578 grains. Okay, now I have installed the 275 grain field point and my total hour weight is 603 grains. Okay, that was the 275 grain field point and it cut the whole of the 250. All right, now we're at the last one. This is the 300 grain, 628 grain hour weight. Now well, there we had the 300 grain field point and it's sticking in the hole of the 275 and the, with the 250. So the 250, 275 and 300 all hit the same hole within a quarter of an inch the way it looks. One thing I will be doing is I need to reshoot the 225 because when I pulled it out it was loose. It uh, was not tight against the brass insert. I'm going to reshoot the 225. When I took it out of the bag, it was not threaded back tight against the brass insert. I'm thinking that's why it hit low and to the left. So we're going to reshoot the 225. Okay, that shot was a reshot with the 225 grain field point. The original one was the one off to the left and low. And when I pulled the arrow out, the field point was not tight against the brass insert. It had either I didn't get it screwed in the whole way, but anyhow, it wasn't tight on against the insert. And I thought maybe that caused the arrow to fly the way it did. And that's the reason I wanted to reshoot it. And now it's lined up with basically everybody else. It's fellas feel that since you have a crossbow and it shoots faster than most recurves or a compound, front of arrow weight, a heavy arrow, maybe isn't a big deal. But why take the chance is my thoughts. Because if I have a big bruiser of a bear show up in archery season, and if I would be lucky enough and draw an elk license, and you have a 800 pound plus elk, 
don't you want to make sure that your archery equipment is going to do the job and not end up with a crippled animal. So in my previous video, and you can check it out here after we're done, please, I show you the difference of mechanicals and a fixed blade broadhead as it enters a target. And most everybody, as I explained in that video, when we shoot, we are straight on, we shoot straight into the target. But if you get that angling, quarter angle shot on that animal, whether it's coming towards you or going away from you, on a mechanical head, they might not do what you think they're supposed to do and what the claims are that they do. And you end up with a wounded animal that you don't recover why would you want that? If you've been practicing and, and making sure your arrows are flying right and whether it's crossbow or compound, you want that ethical kill. So why not have an arrow that is going to get through the hair, the flesh, the meat, the ribs into the critical zone where the heart and lungs are, and then come back out through the ribs that are concaved a different way than the entry side, meat, flesh, hair, that it has a pass-through. Yes, I've had pass-throughs with my mechanicals, with my hybrid mechanicals, and with fixed heads. But most of my shots have been, I've been fortunate that my shots have been broadside. But if I have the opportunity and the animal isn't broadside and it's quarter way shot, etc., and I have a heavier arrow with a fixed blade on that I know that if I hit something that I didn't plan on because the animal moved as I shot, that my chances of that arrow penetrating into the vitals to that sweet spot kill zone are a lot better than a light arrow with a mechanical head that's going to do who knows what. I've seen YouTube videos of fellas shooting mechanical broadheads that did not deploy, did not hear, hit the, and most of it's deer. So if you're having trouble in a deer or a larger animal, I feel, in my opinion, is you just the times, how many times, have expanded the odds of things going wrong. Either the animal ducked and it hit high in no man's land, and it doesn't matter even if you hit there with a fixed blade head. If you're in between the vital, if you're under the spine in that meaty section and so forth, it's a tough shot period for any head. I hear also lots of stories, as I call them, of fellas commenting that, oh, I shot a deer in gun season here in PA and I took out an arrow that was broke off. Well, it's all green and so forth and they're upset, which is understandable. And it could have been they never tell you what for head it was, so you don't know for sure. But it could have been any head. But let's try to improve or make ethical shots with equipment that you punch through the animal, it's going to be dead. And it's not going to travel far. Check out my previous video on broadhead penetration. This is Steve Taylor with STO Wildlife Calls TV. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Pass it on to a hunting buddy.